Hello everyone, and I'm Autobot Sonic the Telltale Gamer, being laced and everything Telltale Games, Transformers, and more. For today's review of Cyberverse, we're going to be looking at Transformers Cyberverse Season 2, Episode 15, Wiped Out. Now, with this episode, we're, again, this is just another filler episode. Not a lot of big stuff happens in this episode, but it's a nice bonding episode between Hot Rod, Bumblebee, and Cheetor, which is a, a trio that I've been growing really fond of throughout this season, ever since they were first introduced back in Episode 5, Trials, where they sort of, like, started hit, hanging out with each other more. And especially a lot in um, Episode 9, Spy, where we got a lot of interaction between Bumblebee and Cheetor. Now we've got like an episode, nice episode where Bumblebee, Cheetor, and Hot Rod all get to interact with each other a fair amount, and I really do enjoy it. But there are a few cons that sort of go ahead and see if this episode did right and what it did wrong. Now with episode 15, we start off with Bumblebee and Hot Rod stuck on basically wiping and cl cleaning duty for the Ark, where the two of them are outside cleaning up all the windows of the Ark. And it's nice to see we get, even though it's very small, we get a nice little interaction between Hot Rod and Bumblebee here, just with the two of them just sort of teasing each other as they to go about their job, and it's stuff like this that makes me really wish we got more of, that just nice little bonding moments between Hot Rod and Bumblebee, because honestly, out of any characters other than Windblade, I feel like Hot Rod is the one character that Bumblebee has the closest relationship to of anyone in the in Cyberverse. Maybe Grimlock, but definitely Windblade and Hot Rod, and then Cheetor, definitely, if I had to rank it like the people that Hot Bumblebee's closest with, I'd say the closest is definitely Windblade and Hot Rod. Then, probably Cheetor and Grimlock are tied after that, maybe Grimlock a little bit more just because he knows him a bit longer. Then Cheetor, and then maybe like Optimus and some of the other Autobots there as well, but mostly it's with Windblade and Hot Rod. So it's, and we've, we got the whole season one just with Bumblebee and Windblade, so now it's nice to see we get more of Bumblebee and Hot Rod, and we only saw Hot Rod a bit back in season one. In the one episode of um, episode 8, I believe, it was Terminal Velocity, when we saw the flashback of him, Bumblebee, and Blur on Velocitron together back when uh, the, the the virus and the, the rust virus ended up going there and destroying Velocitron and killing Blur. But anyway, as Bumblebee and Windblade, are, um, Bumblebee and Windblade, Bumblebee and Hot Rod are just running around the outside of the arc, just chasing each other with the buffers that they're using to clean the, the arc with, they end up noticing a huge asteroid field that the arc is flying into so they go back inside the arc to take cover when optimus and teletron x reveal that they have passed through a sudden asteroid field that's seemingly come out of nowhere and so optimus takes the time to have the arc plot a different course outside of the asteroid field but while doing it teletron x notices that there are a lot of solar waves that are happening at times so this causes bumblebee and hot rod to want to go ahead and go surf those solar waves which cheetor is confused by so they just go ahead and decide to drag him along as well, and I'm not sure if this is intentional or not, but the fact that Bumblebee and Hot Rod love to surf solar waves reminds me a lot of IDW's Hot Rod slash Rodimus' backstory, which um was especially in Hot Rod's introductory issue back in the IW comics with Spotlight Hot Rod. In the IW comics, Hot Rod slash Rodimus was always well known for one of his favorite pastimes, was to surf on meteors and just uh, like I think I think solar waves as well, but definitely surfing meteors in space. And so I think this might just be a nice little callback to that. I haven't found any official confirmation if that was the case or not, but that just reminds me a lot of that in that case. And I gotta say, the artwork here, like that's in the background art, as Bumblebee, Hot Rod, and Cheetor are all surfing along the solar waves. The artwork is absolutely beautiful, like it reminds me a lot of the earlier episodes of Season 1 where it had the, the vast landscapes of Earth that Bumblebee and Windblade journeyed across. This is honestly the prettiest episode of Cyberverse we've seen since the early episodes of Season 1. So kudos to the arc designers for the, for the background designers for Cyberverse Season 2 on this episode. You guys absolutely nailed it with this design, and I absolutely love it. But anyway, while Hot Rod, Bumblebee, and and Cheetor are out surfing, they end up coming across some odd-looking asteroids that when they push something together, they see it forms a statue of what appears to be a Sharktacon. Now, if you know Sharktacons, they were primarily featured in the G1 cartoon, where they were servants of the Quintessence, who were another race of robot beings who were essentially the creators of the Transformers. Now, I do know from some out-of-context clips that the Quintessence do play a role in Cyberverse. They'll be coming up later on in, I believe, Season 3. But I don't know the the, the, the um, context for why they show up, basically. I know the Quintessence are coming, so I just thought I might as well say that first and foremost, so I don't, like, you don't think that, like, I'm just, like, alluding to this and, like, pretending to not know about the Quintessence. I do know that they're going to be involved in it at some point. So maybe this will come back up later, but who knows. Anyway, while they, once they know it's a Sharktacon statue, they don't know it is a Sharktacon, Bumblebee, Hot Rod, and Cheetor decide to go ahead and put together the rest of 
the asteroids together and end up creating this giant Sharktacon temple, it seems. Which, I gotta say, it's kind of odd that they were able to put together this temple almost perfectly from all the different asteroids floating about. Like, it just seems a little bit incredulous they were able to put it together so perfectly. But uh, anyway, I digress. While they're admiring that the completed temple, suddenly a very, very large solar wave ends up coming. And Bumblebee, Hot Rod, and Cheater all try to escape it, but it ends as they are about to take off from the meteor or the temple. The solar flare explodes, presumably consuming Cheetor and killing him in the process. But as we see immediately after, Cheetor was just merely knocked out by the solar wave and is instead found by a group of Sharktacons who call themselves the Finns. And I don't, I, I can't for the life of me remember the names of the the Sharktacons and the Finns. But Cheetor is just so confused by all of them. So the the Finns immediately accuse Cheetor of trespassing on their property, which is just this very, very small meteor that they say used to be their planet, but eventually got destroyed, so that is all that's left of it. So Cheetor, they end up deciding to fight Cheetor, and but Cheetor manages to, to fight them all off. So instead, the Finns decide to go ahead and make basically Cheetor their muscle as they go into a gang war with their rival fact with their rival group of Sharktacons called the Tails, who they initially accused Cheetor of being a spy for. So eventually, um, Cheetor reluctantly goes along with the Finns to go fight this battle against the Tails. And as they're go doing this, the leader of the Tails group of Sharktacons says that they've got their own muscle to fight Cheetor, and it soon enough is revealed to be Bumblebee who was picked up by the Tails, and unlike Cheetor who just norm just looks the same, Bumblebee's just decked out in like or the same orange war paint that all the the fit the Tails wear. Like he's got it like all over his arms and legs, and even like he's got half his face painted orange as well, which I think is just it's stupid. But honestly, like I really like this. Like that's I always liked it when um when Cybertrains get like different um paint jobs as the series progresses. Like in Transformers Prime, I was a huge fan of Bumblebee and Smoke Screens redesigns in season three of that show when Bumblebee got the black and yellow color scheme and Smokescreen got the blue and yellow color scheme. I obviously love that, so I'm all for Transformers getting different paint jobs over the course of a show, even though this one is just very, very minor and only for a single episode. So it, obviously Bumblebee and Cheetor don't fight each other, but all the other fins and tails start to fight each other, and while Bumblebee and Cheetor try to stop them from fighting, suddenly Hot Rod comes out of nowhere and starts fighting the Sharktacons, who is the muscle for a third group of Sharktacons called the Snouts, and Hot Rod is just con as confused as Bumblebee and Cheetor are, and they decide to go ahead and try to leave, but not before Cheetor attempts to do a talk no jutsu on the Sharktacons and try to convince them all to just stop fighting and just live peacefully. And it seems to actually work, so Cheetor, kudos to you for mastering your talk no jutsu off screen. So, but anyway, they it's the Sharktacons seem to put aside their differences, but obviously they, they don't have anywhere to live considering that their planet was destroyed. So Cheetor decides to fix this by, you guessed it, once again grabbing the Allspark from the Ark and using it to rebuild the Sharktacons planet. That sort of similar to how it was as Cheetor sees here just kind of mashes all the asteroids together, but the Sharktacons are happy so that's good enough for Cheetor as he and the rest of the Autobots leave. Um, it's a little bit of an abrupt ending, but not to the degree as many other episodes were this season. And again, not too fond of the the, Spar the all spark being another Deus Ex Machina, but I guess since this thing has does have the power to revive Cybertron, that's that's different. That that it's sort of like we we can sort of excuse it, but again, still it just doesn't sit well with me whenever the all spark is just used for these huge Deus Ex Machina moments, in my opinion. And so that was my review of Transformers Cyberverse Season Two, Episode Fifteen, Wiped Out. If I had to rank this episode, I would give it an 8.5 out of 10. Not a horrible filler episode, it was actually very entertaining. A really beautiful episode, actually, especially for the first half, where just Bumblebee, Cheetor, and Hot Rod are just surfing over all the solar waves. And the soundtrack, and even the, 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 the soundtrack and the art design is just absolutely beautiful. It's great to see, like, an, just an episode where Hot Rod, Cheetor, and Bumblebee can all just hang out and bond more. Because, honestly, I'm loving the dynamic between all three of them. And I'm really hoping for more of it. The only problems are, I just think it's a little bit incredulous that they were able to put together the Sharktacon Temple so effortlessly, and the fact that the Allspark was used as the Deus Ex Machina again. I just wasn't too fond of that, as I'm usually not with the Allspark, be Allspark being used as the Deus Ex Machina. But anyway, that's going to be it for this review. I'll be back soon with episode 16, Ghost Town. If you like this review, be sure to like, comment, and of course subscribe, and I will see you guys later. Take it away, Bumblebee. Bumblebee out. And I might know what I'll be sure